Hello everyone! Welcome to another Unfiltered Gamer Board Game Review. I'm Callie here with Michael and today we are taking a look at monsters and the things that destroy them. The dead edition of this game. Well we'll talk about all three but specifically sharing the new uh, The Dead Incident 3 in the set of monsters and the things that destroy them by Vigor Games. Plays two to four players takes about 15 to 20 minutes to play and ages 13 and up. Yes. <laughs> there are three things we've got. This box is going to be different. All this is a prototype, but in the Kickstarter that's currently going on now as of Halloween, you're going to be getting the up to three different versions of the game that can all be kind of mixed and matched. There's the dark, the deep, and of course the dead. There's additionally a larger variant that lets you add even, even more content. There's like the attack of the baby koalas. Uh, there's also a multi, multi, multiplayer variant as well. And and some other little gifts and givings and whatnot. And then of course there's like the dinos coming out next year. But this is for the full on uh, experience yeah. of the game. So for monsters and the things that destroy them is a bluffing and deduction quick little card game where you're trying to get powerful monsters but also stop your opponents from using their powerful monsters by obtaining the things that destroy them. It's a bluffing game of which uh, monsters or items you keep and at the end the highest score wins. Let's take a look how to play our review of the game and whether or not you should pick it up on Kickstarter. To begin set up for the game The Dark, the first thing that you're going to do is take the deck and shuffle it and place it within reach of all players. Then deal out four cards face up within reach of all players. Next, go ahead and take the top card of the deck and place it to the left in the dead zone. Finally, each player is going to draw one card and place it face down in their own personal discard pile. After that, everybody's going to get a reference card, which will also be their discard pile, which is always going to be face down that you can always look at, and then you're ready to begin the game. On your turn, players will be selecting a card from the pool, the four cards in front of you, reading out loud the name of the card and the numbers just so everyone knows what happens and then if it's a monster card you'll also do the ability outlined at the bottom which can affect the game in different ways if it doesn't have an ability if you have a tactical card then you'll just place it into your hand those cards are going to resolve at the end of the game provided you still have that in your hand uh, then you'll refresh the pool with a new card and play will continue to the next uh, player if at the end of your turn you have more than three cards in your hand you'll discard one face down to your personal discard pile that's important and you want to keep the order the same because that uh, is important for different card abilities and how they interact so you'll have different card abilities that interact with things like your opponent's discard your opponent's hands your hand the dead zone and the pool um, all of those could be changed and interacted with with the special abilities the game is going to end when the deck is when completed? The, yes, when the deck is run out, you'll keep uh, going on turns and then you should all have three cards in your hand at the end. If you don't, you'll you'll draw one from the top of your dis personal discard pile. Then everyone is going to select the two cards they want to go to the final resolution with. So you'll discard that third card to your personal discard pile. And then you kind of take turns to ramp up. Everyone will reveal their highest card first and then their lowest card second and finally you'll resolve any of the during resolution effects which includes possibly canceling out certain monster numbers in the game like this flamethrower yes. cancels out a nine or a ten monster if they get placed so for instance the thing can get canceled out by the flamethrower so if you had the thing and i had the flamethrower and i had a three and this was your highest monster you didn't have any other monsters i would uh -oh. win the game yep that's or, correct so whoever has the highest number at the end after resolution is triggered is the winner pretty simple pretty straightforward game let's go ahead and discuss monsters and the things that destroy them so monsters and the things that destroy them have have the three different variables, the dark, the deep, the dead, and they're all unique gameplay styles, but the game plays the same as far as mechanics go. You're always going to be having a certain number of cards face up, you're going to have your discard pile, and you're also going to have your hand. With the dead, it comes with a unique little dead zone that's kind of off to the side, which is a nice little twist to the game, but in general, You'll be drawing cards and then you're going to be getting a number of cards in your hand. Whenever you get past that four, you'll be discarding them and you're trying to get the best possible cards like this 12, 11, and 10 here. Yes, however, if someone has the card that cancels the 11 and 12, 
you wouldn't want to have those in your hand at the end. So the game is kind of like <laughs> you want to know what your opponents have, what they're trying to cancel out, and what the next highest number is going to be. If you know for a fact that somebody has the cancel 9 and 10, so for instance Someone the alien and the up. thing, yep. maybe you're going to want to have uh, the 11 or the 12, the shape or the robot. Mm -hmm. And you're also saying, okay, wait, did somebody else pick up one card that gets rid of something else? Uh, and it's kind of this like deduction game where you're trying to determine, oh, does this person have this? Do I, can I get this? Should I get rid of this? Information is key. So some of the abilities that let you like peek at someone's hand or their discard pile are really important because yeah, maybe someone picked up the the card that cancels the 11 and 12, but they discarded it, well now you're free to use those cards. <laughs> and you can actually use cards to get rid of other cards yes. in players' hands to yes. prevent them from doing that to you as well. Mm -hmm. uh, this has a cool unique dead zone mechanic that usually involves uh, the monsters affecting in some way. Like for instance, the alien can look at the bottom card of any discard pile and you may move it to the dead zone. Now everyone knows it's a dead card. <laughs> mm, the shape is never going to be able to be moved to the dead zone because the shape never dies. Yep. And the robot may remove a card in the dead zone from the game when you take him. And so each of these monsters have their own unique abilities that trigger in certain mm -hmm. ways throughout the game. You're going to have lower numbers, like the clown here, which is only going to be a two, but it lets you swap any two discard piles, which is very, very powerful. Much like the butcher, another really weak monster, but you can send a card in mm -hmm. your hand to the dead zone or exchange it for a card at equal or lower point value. And so on and so on. And, and these just all have unique tactical advantages every time you pick them. And deciding between that, speaking of tacticals, yeah. choosing which tactical <laughs> cards to get is gonna help you as well. Preventing the three and four or the nine and 10 from being at the end of the game, using a reanimation serum or the Necronomicon, or maybe something like a reality check or destroying the heart of. And each of these cards plays in thematic resolution with the different characters. How does the thing, or maybe perhaps the alien and pass away? Well, that's going to be with a flamethrower. <laughs> Maybe the conventional uh, weapon, so for instance the uh, shotgun, might defeat the hunter or might defeat the butcher. And so on and so on. And that has this kind of nice twist to it where you're feeling thematically relevant. Yeah, it's nice that the themes make sense with the game, which is which is great and true for all of them and goes with the name of the game, monsters and the things that destroy them, and right? This is the, I believe, second campaign, maybe third, for the series. And mm -hmm. each of the series have come out with new cards and new styles of play, all remaining true to the original design structure. And if you want, as far as I'm aware, you can pick up the dark, and you can pick up the deep, and the dead. The dead is going to be focusing more on uh, monsters and these like, like movie, movie inspired, inspired monsters, inspired monsters slasher yeah. monsters of cinema. Uh, it's going to uh, feature the uh, dark, which is going to have dark monsters like Dracula and mm -hmm. like the hidden man and whatnot. And then the deep, you're going to have like the kraken Aquatic and the squid monsters. and all the aquatic monsters. Yes. And it's got other little things too in the Kickstarter as well. You have like the love and hate, love and hate metagame expansion. You have the baby Koalas four to six player expansion. And of course you have dinos coming out soon as well. So some of these cards can play together. Games can play together. Um, you can kind of switch and swap them as well. You need to like leave well. them so you can mix. And there's certain um, suggestions on which cards as well to kind which of Which will go with what, which swap. will not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, customization has a nice little ring to it as well when you want to pick up certain numbers of these games to play. And you can also of course maybe do this like, like a tournament as well with oh, each yeah. players doing the different types of uh -huh. decks. Uh -huh. uh, monsters and the things that destroy them have really cute art, a lot like parody style artwork that's fun and vivid and reminds mm -hmm. me of nostalgic times and like Pirates of the Caribbean type things or 80 monster movies yeah. and even the older like uh, what what is that old monster, uh, the Dracula? What's what's that guy's name? Um, I can't remember the original one. But uh, it kind of reminds me of those old school 1960s style, the mummy, the blob, and that, that kind oh, of yeah, feel to yeah. it. It has that uh -huh. ring to it as really well. Really cinematic. Yeah. Yes. So if you're interested in picking these up, uh, I strongly recommend this game. It's a lot of fun. It's very quick. It's very easy to play. It's Super very easy to pick easy. up. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where you're going to drop down and play in approximately like 10 minutes. And very social too, because even though you could pick up the cancellation card, maybe you discarded it and now everyone thinks you have it, but you don't. So a bunch <laughs> Bunch of little mini little games like in that. one box. It's yeah. a nice little like twist to the idea of those like 20 card card games and mm -hmm. it's kind of put them all into a singular playing box which if you're going to get this I'd strongly suggest getting the the multi-pack one because it everything. gives you a lot of variety <laughs> in the game and if you like one of them you'll like them all and they all play a little bit differently. Overall this is a solid A plus in my book Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them The Dead.
check out the Kickstarter for Monsters and the Things That Destroy Them in the link below. And while you're down there, please hit that like button and that subscribe and bell notification to see more videos just like this one where we look at tons of board games and share, share all about them and join us live on Sundays and Wednesdays on Twitch, 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, where we play games just like this one. Play, In fact, we have yes. played a game. We played the original <laughs> played the, dark. the Dark on stream before. So you can actually see our playthrough of that. We might even be playing one of these guys here before the campaign ends. Well, that's pretty much all we got for you guys. And as always, we look forward to seeing See you guys, guys next time. time.